by the scene outside, you'd never guess the story. It'd been a scorcher of a July with very little rain in Port Charlotte, Florida, but it was about to get hotter. She was hot like most people, but she was also a textbook hot mess. Case in point, she's as high as it is hot outside as she traverses through the Cambridge Drive Northwest neighborhood early Monday afternoon. The 42-year-old jeans and t-shirt kind of woman, Heather Kennedy, has woman next door natural beauty scarred by decades of intense stress and intoxicants. She is a long way from the farm country where she grew up, but she also cleans up really well when she wants to. It's hard to say where her problems began, as there have been so many lately. Her problems with Chris, and the trouble that brought, and she'd slip back into at least one evil. But today, Heather has a clear mission. She was a couple miles from her house, but whether or not she was fully aware of this at the time is questionable. It's also questionable exactly how many doors she tried, but Edna Crowley noticed Heather trying to get into her lanai. Edna says, she was at the screen door in my pool trying to get it open, but luckily I always lock my screen doors to the pool. Many houses in Florida have backyard pools surrounded with lanai, the Hawaiian word for porch that has come to mean a screen or glass enclosure for your pool. A lanai encloses the pool and your porch area into a sort of indoor, sort of outdoor porch. The lanai screen door is the screen door that Edna means, and the ones that Heather is trying. Undeterred. Heather moves on, continuing to check to see if she can find anyone's back door unlocked. Et voila! She hits pay dirt and finds a lanai with an open door, and she enters, ready to initiate her plan. She takes off her shirt, tossing it on the ground as she meanders deeper into the lanai. Then she removes her shoes and purse, just tossing them on the ground as she trespasses through someone else's property. Finally, she drops her shorts to the ground. Heather walks fully naked across someone's backyard without a care in the world before climbing into the cool, inviting pool. Once satisfied with her location and temperature, she lays her head on the side of the pool and drifts off. How would Heather, a single mother, dropped so far in her life that she is high, naked, and passed out in a stranger's pool? Her life was clearly on a downward trajectory. She really didn't need to pass out in pools to prove that. And what a dangerous adventure in so many ways. Didn't she know the type of danger she could be in? Who owned the house? What would they do if they found a naked woman passed out in their pool? Would they take advantage of her? And more pressing, at any moment she could drown and die. Would anyone find her before that happened? Or would she just be another pool death statistic? And one that figuratively haunts the poor family which has to find her? and is then left with bad memories of a dead woman in their pool effectively alienating the family from their home. Just imagine the heartbreak of her children learning of such a death. Absolutely heartbreaking. They didn't need that. The family was still reeling from her unexpected criminal conviction just a few months earlier. In late 2020, Heather was pulled over by the police for a routine traffic stop. The police found used crack and meth pipes and morphine pills and marijuana in her car. They arrested her for felony drug possession. She pleads with the police. The drugs and pipes are not hers. They belong to crackhead Chris. He must have stashed them in her car. But no one buys this story, and she is convicted. Unfortunately, she didn't seem to have gotten the message that she has a drug problem. They say you have to hit rock bottom in order to really change your life. But few people literally mean hitting your head on the rocks at the bottom of a pool. Is that Heather's fate? Jim Clark, 69, and his wife, two retirees, had been at a doctor's appointment. Around 2.30, they pull into the driveway of their house on Cambridge Drive, ready to enjoy their afternoon. The last thing they expected was to take part in Schrodinger's lanai. Even just the wet, naked woman they're about to find in their spot would be overwhelming for anyone. But what happens next is something they could never have predicted and will never forget. Noticing something is off, Jim says, We saw like a shirt and some shoes and a bag, you know, and like a couple denim shorts and a jacket. Totally unreal, you know? After accepting that there was someone at least in their lanai, they surveyed their backyard. We looked out and saw a person in the swimming pool with no clothes on. She was basically just lying down, head on the bricks on the side of the pool. She was barely coherent. First thing I, th I thought, well, I'll go get rid of them real quick, and then I thought I better not 
So we called the sheriffs. They were here within probably five minutes or so. Rather quickly, he's connected with dispatch. In his estimation, the police were taken aback by the call. They were kind of like, what? Can you describe all the, you know, and even when the first sheriff deputy came, it was like, we had never, I didn't remember having a call like that. Though in many ways, if you have to have an intruder, it's likely a bit of relief to realize it's an inebriated woman in your backyard pool and not someone more dangerous to you with dangerous intentions. But Jim Clark says the moment, just to kind of feel violated, it's not something you hear of every day. A few minutes later, around 3 p.m., the police arrive at the scene. Amazing response time, but it is the middle of the day on a Monday afternoon in a small town. One of the officers finds and collects her clothes, then asks her to get dressed. At this point, Heather gets standoffish. She tells him, stop bothering me. After further requests, she flatly states that she will not go anywhere with them. She won't give her name. She refuses to explain why she's in the clerk's pool. She keeps demanding they just leave her alone. Eventually, they get her to come out of the pool and to get dressed. But she still doesn't want to be bothered, refuses to go anywhere with them, won't give her name or an explanation for why she's on the private property of strangers. But she keeps her word by struggling with the officer trying to cuff her before just walking away from the scene. Jim says, she was walking out the door and one of them was just running after her. Deputies chased her into the yard and placed her under arrest. She is taken to the Charlotte County Jail and charged with trespassing and resisting without violence. A little over a month later, on Monday, August 21st, 2021, she pleads guilty to both charges. And while these sound serious, in Florida, Resisting arrest without violence is a first-degree misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in prison, and trespassing is a second-degree misdemeanor with a maximum sentence of 60 days in prison. So all in all, this is another soft wake-up call, all things considered. Even for the Clark family. Clark says, let this be a lesson to keep your screen doors locked. All right, I know a few people have been thinking about this all along, so I must address it. Despite the idea of a naked woman in your pool being a pornographic fantasy for some, it's still not something most people would expect or honestly really even want to come home to for that matter. I understand that the imaginary is a strong force and that sexuality is a big part of that, but it really doesn't change the fact that skinny dipping in a stranger's pool is a super bizarre behavior in real life. Especially in this case, because she's passed out. And the only people that would be interested in such a thing in the real life version of this story are either sexual predators or intense white knights, because someone passed out in a pool is well beyond legal consent in most jurisdictions. But what do you think? Should she have been charged with more offenses, indecent exposure, or is she more in need of treatment than charges? Would you have pressed charges if it was your pool? If you like this video, you'll probably enjoy my death-free true crime playlist. But before you check it out, like and subscribe real quick. And I hope to see you again really soon, because there's always something lurking underneath the floorboards. You never know what you're gonna get.